Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the Monday, March 17th, 2014 edition of the Monday Roundup with shrinkformen.com and a voiceformen.com. As with me, I am Dean Esme, Managing Editor and General Creepy Basement Dweller of a voiceformen.com. With me, as always, is the uh, notorious labia trader and wannabe rapist, Tara, Dr. Tara Palmadier. Say hi, Dr. Tara. Hello, and I, I, I do not want to be a rapist, but thank you very much. <clears throat> I said last week I'd call you the rapist, so. Okay. And per uh, usual, also the lovely and always uh, uh, soft-voiced soft and cuddly Paul Elam, publisher of A Voice for Men. Say hi, Paul. I really don't want to be cuddly, and and Dr. T, it doesn't matter if you want to be called rapist or not. Um, <laughs> if I feel to... that you raped me, you did. Uh, yeah. We have a form to report you on. That's right, we do. Anonymously. <laughs> Anonymously, that's right. Well, I'll be anonymous. But anyway, blobbity bobbity. So this is sort of a special edition because normally we have a minimum of three stories that we choose to talk about. And this week we are really pretty much just going to talk about one story. Uh, the, the particular case of uh, an autistic boy, a 16-year-old mentally ill boy, it's actually, or mentally disabled boy, it's not entirely clear from the context of the stories whether he's autistic or something else because the news reports just say, well, his parents said they were told he was autistic, whatever that means. It's clear that he's not, as we would, as, as, as is now the preferred lingo, he is not what they call neurotypical. Um, probably autistic, that's what it sounds like. Now, this and, and and in any case, the short story of what happened is, is that he got two female friends he was hanging out with for a while, and the, it eventually became discovered that they were in the habit of severely abusing him. Um, this is a tough one for me because I don't want to uh, violate the privacy of my children, but I do have a special needs child who is autistic. It's very difficult for me to look at a situation like that and not lose my shit um, and become extremely angry in general and even maybe a little incoherent. Um, one of the things those of us who are parents of autistics, some, that some parents of autistics forget but others finally figure out is that it's all well and good that there is a great deal of so-called autism awareness out there but it is still focused almost entirely on children and people seem to forget that autistics become adult autistics and they still need problems. They still have problems, but almost all the support is for children and is encouraged on being nice to the children. And one of the horror th horrible things that happens to a lot of autistic children is people think they're cute and nice and they're very supportive and that both the resources and the perceiving them as cute and harmless goes away after puberty and they're suddenly an adult or a young adult or even in their 40s or 50s or 60s and still weird for one of a better lack of a better word not typical and they're no longer getting that kind of support anymore and so I see in this case, okay, this young man is probably autistic. He uh, did not understand that he was being abused, and these girls were truly horrifically cruel to him. Part of me wants to blame his parents. Part of me is saying, I'm terrified of what happens when my own child is this age because there's only so much control you have over a child like this, and you can't be with them 24 hours a day. And so I literally do feel some sympathy for his parents. I feel more sympathy for him. And I just don't know what the answer is. I do know I'm not, on, not entirely happy with some of the reporting I've seen. In fact, I'm quite unhappy with a lot of the reporting. But I think I've said enough to, for now. What do you guys have to say? I'll let Dr. T go first. Uh, for anyone who isn't familiar with the news story, uh, this occurred, I believe, in Maryland, and it's a 16-year-old boy who was 
abused and assaulted by two of his classmates, one a 15, an, 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 an as of yet unnamed 15-year-old girl and a 17-year-old uh, girl, I think her name is, is it Laura, Lauren Bush? Yes. Um, who is being charged as an adult for the crimes. Now, they didn't just push this kid around. Over a, a, a period of, uh, they believe, going back to December of last year and February of this year, they would hold a knife against this, this boy's throat, um, pushed him to walk out onto a barely frozen pond. He was falling through the ice at different times. Uh, they wouldn't help him get out. They, again, at knife point, forced him across this pond and also coerced him into masturbating and according to the police reports who saw this video, the video has not been made public as far as I know, got him to perform sexual act on a family pet. So this isn't just a case of bullying. This is a case of some seriously sadistic, sick shit that the 17-year-old girl, Lauren Bush, and her unnamed friend did to this kid. Um, I, I called the girls sociopaths and was corrected that they have not been diagnosed as far as we know. But I, I, I'm not going out on a limb, I think, in saying that their behavior is certainly sociopathic. And the way their abuses were discovered was because these two sick fucking shits videotaped these events on their cell phones. Now, which leads me to believe that, I mean, if you're videotaping something, you want to watch it again or you're proud of it or you think you're having a good hair day and you want to put it on your fucking Facebook page. So that leads me to believe that these two girls were videotaping this stuff to, to watch later and laugh at it which leads me to believe that they were deriving pleasure in degrading and torturing this boy and the family pet. Um, the, the really sad thing is that this boy thinks that these girls are still his friends and that this was them just joking around with him. Now, according to the interview I read in the Washington Post, uh, they refer to the mother of the boy and her husband, so who knows if the husband is his biological father or stepfather, if he's a stepfather, who knows where his father is, um, said, uh, basically stated uh, she, she hadn't called the girl's parents yet, um, and she wasn't going to judge the girl's parents because uh, she presumes that they didn't know what they were up to admitted that she's afraid that people will judge her as a bad parent because she didn't she never met these girls even though they had spent snow days in her home and she had recently become concerned because her son was spending a lot of his savings on the 15 year old girl and referred to her uh, as his girlfriend so mom is worried that she people are going to judge her as a bad parent because she didn't know where her kid was every minute of the day because she had to work I guess I'll, I'll jump in here on that and certainly want to echo everything that Dr. T just said. I also want to, oh boy, this is a, a tough one in some ways because, I mean, I think it's important to remember with as much focus go, as there is going on on the mother, and, and I think deservedly so. Uh, I'm going to get to that as we get through this program. I think there's some scrutiny that the mother has earned based on what she has revealed, not based on my conjecture, but what uh, she has told the media, I think there's a, a real hard look at her judgment and her decisions regarding having a mentally handicapped son. But I don't want to forget that the real culprits here are these two depraved young women. Uh, they are the ones that kicked him in the groin. They're the ones that forced him into sex with an animal. They're the ones that held a knife to his throat, and I have no doubt that the 15-year-old uh, at, at all was playing him for that money uh, to get more and more use out of him so that she could benefit from it. And just like Dr. T said, these sick fuckers were videotaping this and uh, probably reviewing it and having a good laugh at their, at their really, really sick conduct. Um, one concern I have is 
that too much, as much as I think the mom deserves some focus, that too much focus has been put on in the press on the mother uh, when we probably have two girls that are going to get uh, a benefit of the pass, uh, as we all know, um, that women get when committing heinous acts. And I'm really worried about that. I read one report somewhere where uh, apparently the 17-year-old, it said, was released on her own recognizance. I read another one that said that she was remanded. So I don't know which story is true. I, I believe the 15-year-old was remanded. She's in juvenile custody right now, and the 17-year-old was released on her own recognizance. On her own recognizance. Now, I'm just, you know, it almost seems gratuitous and obligatory at this point, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. What do you, do you think that a 17-year-old boy who forced a 16-year-old mentally handicapped girl to walk on a frozen pond and kicked her in the groin and forced her to have sex with animals and videotaped it, do you believe for a moment that he would be released on his own recognizance? I can guarantee you he would be remanded without bond that no, and also that the press would be on this story in an extremely different way than they're covering it right now. Um, of course, we would have all the feminist ideologues coming out and talking about toxic masculinity, and uh, you know this would become part of somebody's white ribbon campaign. Uh, but the bottom line is here that we do have uh, two young women that are acting very much like sociopaths, like there's no sense of remorse whatsoever in what they've done, and there's no limits or no boundaries, and we turn around and let one of them, the oldest one, who was arguably the ringleader, just turn around and walk out free uh, as though something didn't happen. I'm girls sick. will be girls. Yes, that's right, of course. And um, uh, sick fucks will be sick fucks, and a sick, sick society will be a sick society that allows this stuff to go without even establishing some sort of really high bail. Uh, Dean, you were trying to say something? I will do the necessary, because we don't want to be hypocrites. These girls haven't been convicted yet. I suppose there's some strange universe in which this could all be a horrible misunderstanding. Um, but I doubt it, especially when the police say. But they that they admitted that they admitted that they did it. <laughs> so they have admitted guilt. They admitted, they admitted that they did. Yeah, according yeah. to the Washington Post story, they admitted doing this. Okay. Um. Then they admitted it. Fuck it. Um. I. It, it's well, been, if I've the read, evidence is on their phone, I think they kind I, of had no choice. But I've to read these it. stories, and I they, they get me so emotional. I forget <sighs> details. Okay. So they've admitted it. Then I'm going to be done with the word alleged. They did it. It only remains to be seen what punishment they'll get. And what makes me furious, not only is that what has happened here, is but is my certainty that Paul is correct and that neither of these girls is going to get anything like, anything close to what a boy would get had he done this to a girl who was mentally disabled. I have zero doubt. Zero. I mean, I. All right. Point zero 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 one percent. All right. I'm never a hundred percent or anything, but shit. No. Paul's right. Paul's right. And then, what really makes me angry? Because, all right, I'm gonna try and cut the mom some slack. I, I know I'm a parent. You cannot be on these kids twenty four seven. You cannot. And it's also possible they only talk to the mom because dad didn't want to say anything. Um, that said, his parents have something to answer for because if they, either of them, knew that their son, who has issues, is dating a girl and he's spending money on her and they never took the time to meet these girls, make a point of meeting these girls, I'm sorry, that's unbelievably irresponsible, even if he is 16. I mean, it would be a little irresponsible if he were 16 and didn't have any mental disabilities. But well, my I think most parents, whether or not your kid is disabled, you want to know the children that he or she is hanging out with, especially if they're coming into your home in your absence, and you want to know their parents. And that's exactly right. And 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 
and I don't care how liberal you are, this is a special needs child, which means you will have to be more diligent with them. And so it is irresponsible. I, I can't say I know everything, but it is irresponsible that she did not know who these girls were. At least the girls she knows he was spending money and time with, uh, the one we don't know the name of, but that she says he was spending money on. Why the fuck wouldn't you have made sure to meet her? And find that's, out that's my point, Dean, is that special needs mean special protections and special concerns. I mean, there's no way to get around that, uh, aside from the fact that I think most adequate parents are involved enough in their kid's life that they know who they're associating with, uh, they know the families, that sort of thing. But here's the other deal. I, I mean, in reading the mother's account of this, I thought it was extremely telling that she said she would reserve judgment about the parents because she assumed that they didn't know what the girls were up to. This is a woman who is projected, in my opinion, that she automatically assumes probably that no parents ever has a clue about what their kids are doing. It's really pretty obvious to me this woman was clueless about the life of her son. These people were in her home when she was at work. These people were taking her mentally disabled son's money. These people were spending time with him uh, over a period of months that she was fully aware of, and she admitted to one point that she got kind of concerned because he was spending most of his money on the 15-year-old, but she decided not to bother saying anything about it. This is neglect, in my opinion. Now, again, I don't want to take the onus of responsibility off of these two little monsters that, that sexually tortured this boy. But That's I do true. want to say that there is some culpability here. Uh, you like it or not, you have a, any child, you have responsibilities to protect them till they're of age. Uh, I, I think a lot of parents forget that. I, I don't give a damn. And I don't give a damn about liberal standards today for parenting. If you're not going to take care of your child, if you and you got a mentally handicapped child, then sorry, I don't know who he's hanging out with, what he's doing, and you know he's of the personality type that he is vulnerable to this very thing. He's vulnerable to being manipulated by people. He's vulnerable to being abused, and you and you know he's spending his money on somebody, and you still don't check into what's going on in his life. I'm sorry, that's neglect, and you've got a responsibility in it. Now, nobody in the press seems to have been thought to even ask where's dad on all this. We don't even know if dad's in the picture or if he's living with a stepfather. If dad's in the picture, he's every bit as culpable. If he's not, then it is all on mom. And the most infuriating thing to me, um, other than the, the actual event, was Hannah Rosen's column about this in Slate. I mean, this this piece of trash... Let me just say, I have very little respect for Hannah Rosen to begin with. She's written some books uh, on men's issues where she lays out men's issues fairly well, but from a completely unsympathetic and even often hateful point of view. Like, she gloats. Uh, she gloats over the problems men are having. And it's very hateful. I mean, it's very much like listening to somebody gloating over. Uh, never mind. I'm not. I, it's she's a bigot. She's a horrible, hateful bigot to begin with. And you can tell where she's coming from just from the damn headline. Maybe she didn't read this, but uh, sadistic girls bully autistic boy. Boy still considers them his friends. That's already the wrong note for me. Like the significance is that he still considers them his friends. That needs to be in the headlines. I, okay. And Hannah Rosen spends as much time expressing sympathy for the mother. In fact, I'd say she spends more time expressing sympathy for the mother and concern for the mother and her feelings than she does about this boy or these, kid, these, these, these young women, girls, whatever you want to call them, who did these monstrous things. Um... Did, did you Rosen. notice in the, at the beginning of that article that Rosen uh, framed Rosen framed what the girls did as them they asked the boy to have sex with an animal and they asked him to do this and asked him to do that and then she mentioned several paragraphs later that they were holding a knife to his throat. Um, 
it, it, they didn't ask this boy to do anything. They made him. And Rosen intentionally obfuscated that to, to lessen the burden of responsibility on the perpetrators and then set about more or less writing a script of excuses for the mother. Oh, because what did Rosen say? Uh, I really feel her pain because she might have had to work a whole day so she didn't have time to be involved with her son's life. Man, fuck you, Hannah Rosen. Fuck you. This is, uh, this is some of the sickest stuff that's going on. And uh, both of them feel obviously nothing about writing this stuff. It's absolutely outrageous. She doesn't think to ask about the father. No, of course not. Uh, she doesn't think about anything. But you're right. Her whole thing frames this mostly as about, the, uh, about ugh, minimizing what happened to the boy and trying to exonerate the, uh, trying to minimize what these girls did and exonerate the mother as much as she can. It is ideological feminist scripting and it is nonsense. The main culpable parties are these young girls. Uh, the second ones are the parents, all the parents involved. And this mother, I don't know where dad is again. Um, so, I mean, if he's forcibly out of the picture, he's innocent. But if he's actually living in that home, he's just as culpable. But in any case... Trust me, if they find a way to blame that father, he'll be a part of the story very soon. Yeah, no shit. Um, and it's like, I think the only thing, area where I will disagree with Dr. Tara, if I may be so bold, is that I'm not even sure that it is classifiable as sociopathic in the sense that teenagers can be unre unbelievably cruel people to begin with when... They can be unbelievably cruel. That's all I'm going to mm -hmm. say. And, and, and they will often just push as to how far they can go and just keep going until a limit is found. Um, and it looks like they would have kept going and might have even gotten to the point where they seriously hospitalized this kid if something hadn't caught them sooner. I'm not sure it's sociopathic, such as because to me sociopathic is a disorder. I think this is teenagers with shitty parents all the way around. I think that's no. <laughs> this isn't. Okay. This isn't. They stole his milk money. This isn't. They got him to do their term papers for him. This isn't. They teased him on the bus. They had him have sex with a household pet while holding a knife to his throat. This. This isn't an online bullying campaign, which can be pretty horrific and awful. This is this is like this is evil, sadistic torture and humiliation that they did to this kid, it and seem to me. and seem to derive pleasure out of it. If I am if I'm accurate, and that's and that's the I mean, well, why else would they do it? They were getting no, some. They're having some kicks. It was obviously sadism. I remember from my high school days the stories I've heard about hazing and just how cruel uh, that can get with physical torture and that sort of thing. Um, and then some you know, I think for me one of the ha one of the hallmarks of sociopathy is is taking pleasure and degrading and humiliating others who are weaker than yourself and having no freaking empathy or remorse about it. So. You know what? And you know what? Why 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 split hairs over a terminology, especially with a clinical? So psychology? you can you can you can call it whatever you want. I, I don't care it's what you call it's, it. It's horrific the, sadism. The, 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 the behavior the behavior is sadistic and. Uh, I understand what Dean's saying. Um, I wouldn't want uh, those girls in, around in, any child of mine days, or pets. We used to um, have an exp I used to work with adolescents, and we used to have a sort of just a, a, a running joke. Uh, saying the psychopathology is adolescence. And mm -hmm. But that goes of, back to uh, shitty it, parents. Well, no, because, you know, teenagers can be cruel. I'm not applying that to this situation. I'm just saying that, that it's very typical for teenagers to be undeveloped emotionally, for them not to have the empathy uh, for others that adults do. That's a, a product of, of maturation and time and, and developmental. Uh, things, but uh, so it is pretty normal for teenagers to be cruel. They can be vicious with each other, but that is not in the league of this stuff. Uh, 
And whether we put a label on it or not, the state has a label for it. It's called criminal. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's called kidnapping. And it's called sexual torture. And it's called uh, uh, aggravated assault in, and, I, in, in sexual assault in any number and, of and, other and none of these articles that I see mention of these two, I have a hard time calling them girls, uh, the, these two individuals being put on the sex offenders registry. Not in a single article that I see mention of that. Well, at least the 17-year-old is getting tried as an adult, so she probably will if she's actually prosecuted the way a boy her Why age. can't the 15-year-old help? There was, was it just last December or November? Was his name Travis, the six-year-old in Colorado, was being threatened with putting being put on the sex offenders registry because he kissed another six-year-old girl in class? And he, there, he was, you know, they were poised to put him on the sex offenders registry, and no mention about that, that for these two himself women. After streaking through a football game, because yeah, they threatened to put him on a sex offenders registry, I think, but I, I haven't heard a word about it, and I don't think we're going to. I think that's the one Tara is thinking of. Actually, he was the. Yeah, there was the streaker, but there was also a six-year-old boy. We did a hangout well, on the story. Yeah. Yeah, he he definitely got accused of sexual harassment. I don't know if they were talking about a registry for him. Um, oh, maybe I am. Yeah, I think I am jumbling that. He was he was going to be charged with sexual harassment, which could have led to a six-year-old well, being put, put on the sex offenders registry. But, school record, but they ended up removing it only after his name and sexual harasser was plastered all over the internet. Um, it, so it, great job on their part. I do think that this point to, I mean, we can only speculate, so fine, rampant speculation here, armchair psychoanalysis here, which I hate, but I'm actually pretty sure that uh, in the teenager dynamic of 17-year-old girl and 15-year-old girl, I will bet 15-year-old girl was being egged on by 17-year-old girl. I'll bet that's a big part of the dynamic that was happening there. Not um, that she has an excuse. Not that she has an excuse. That's correct. That's correct. Not that she has an excuse. Both of these girls should be facing serious punishment, and I don't think they're going to. And that's what really bugs me. Um, if they were boys, they'd already be, they'd have been, you know, looking at $100,000 bail. They'd, they'd, be, they'd be in jail with adult men right now, both of them. That 15-year-old would have been charged as an adult, more than likely, if she'd had a penis instead of a vagina. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, maybe the older girl was egging her on. On the other hand, she was milking this kid for money. Yep. Pretending to be his friend, and he was buying tickets to the movies. I believe Mom said, you know, he was paying for them all to go to the movies. We need to do more to empower girls. Well, maybe the real issue is that people called them bossy. Yeah. When they were growing awesome. up, and look how they turned out. Oh God, that must have been it. They were somebody's called them bossy, and they had to do something about that and get revenge at the hateful misogynist society that calls bitchy girls bossy. Oh wait a minute, I just said bitchy. Oh my God. All right, now it all makes sense. You torture a young man because people use language. You don't. I, I hate to use this as a seg, but to draw in that other story, I think there's something very relevant here. Uh, what we're seeing in the ban bossy campaign is equivalent to giving license to young girls to bully. Mm -hmm. um, there, we're, what, we're, what we should be doing is discourage, discouraging bullying, but we're actually encouraging it if it's coming from young girls. Uh, if you look through all their propaganda about ban bossy, you don't see any distinction of behavior, any description, anything. Just if a girl's being bossy, don't say it. Uh, there are plenty of girl bullets, lots and lots and lots of them. I mean, they're, they're just everywhere. And now we have people from the U.S. government and celebrities and, of course, idiots like Beyonce that are running around saying, let's encourage girls to have a license to bully their peers, especially their male peers. That's the message here. And, of course, Look at what girls are capable of. We're talking about what they're capable of, which is anything just as heinous as any boy is. Uh, but that's another reason that that campaign is just absolutely insane. It's a campaign to encourage bullying, which feminists are supposedly so fucking concerned about and want to stop in all their schools. But it's only because they imagine that it's female victims and male perpetrators, same shit, different day. 
And that Ben Bossy shit is coming from a feminist named Sheryl Sandberg, who's the COO of Facebook. Um, so it, it's and she's putting a lot of money behind this obscene bossy campaign to monitor other people's language. Um, and yeah, I actually do see. I think young girls are probably on the whole more violent and more abusive today than they were 40 years ago. There's Not research that, was... that back set up by uh, Munoz and Rivas, I believe is the name, that shows that girls are more likely, I forget the percentage number, to engage in relational aggression, which is shrink speak for bullying, than their male counterparts. And that goes for girls and in adult relationships. Bam Bossy. Dane, did we lose you? Oops. Oh, there he is. He's back. He's back. Okay. You're back. I missed what you were saying there, but uh, go Just ahead. so everybody knows, just before we came on today, YouTube had announced that they were having emergency technical problems, that Hangouts may or may or not be broadcast properly. So this time, at least, we're not pulling an ASME. <laughs> if there's any technical problems, <laughs> it's uh, YouTube's fault. The the I, I was about to say I there was never a time when when girls were not aggressive there was no magical time when that didn't happen but I I, I have seen reason to believe that girls are more aggressive today than they used to be and I mean more bullying more harsh more violent than they used to be um, I've seen evidence that this is true um, uh, and and I think a lot of it comes from this climate of let's empower girls. Which, you you know, never, ever hit a girl, no matter what. You never, ever hit a girl. It doesn't matter if she hit you first, kicked you, bit you. Yeah. Never, ever hit a girl. Always respect girls and women, even if it's not merited. Uh, so the, culturally, we've essentially created a climate where <laughs> girls must be respected no matter what. They can be violent as anything, and a boy is, is punished if he defends himself. I mean, you know, what are they, what's she he going to do next? Start arming arming six-year-old girls so they can pop a cap and it's a five-year-old boy who won't give them who if he won't give them his toy and they have a moral responsibility to kill a boy if he won't share its toys. I mean, yes. what's next? Believe me, it's coming. And it's, Sandberg will help her. It's it suddenly hit me like a ton of bricks that if this boy at some point had realized what had happened and screamed and hit one of those girls in self-defense, we wouldn't even be reading this story. We'd be worried about the mentally ill boy who attacked the girls. In a way, he's fortunate that he was too... Uh, Socially naive and trusting. To realize that there was something wrong going on. Um, and so that w the, when they were holding a knife to his throat, had he actually fought back, he might already be in jail. That's how sick the society has become. Um, oh, oh, I can't say anything. Yeah, I think that's real important. I don't think you can say it too much, Dean. This is social illness. It's not just a bad story about two bad eggs or, uh, or two sets of rotten parents or three sets or uh, however many are involved. It's not just a story about feminism uh, or any one particular thing. It's about a culture that has gone absolutely out of its freaking mind. This is absolutely insane. The lack of outrage. Uh, the, uh, well, should be, I mean, the idea that they let this girl walk out of jail should have resulted in a riot in that town. Uh, it, it was true that it was on a recognizance. That's one of the things that struck me in the segments of the interview that the Washington Post article uh, reported on the interview with the mother is that, and I mean, maybe it's not coming across, but if, if I were this woman, I would be out of my mind. And she sounded, at least in the, in the way her interview was reported in the Post, so just very blasé about it, as if it, it wasn't any big deal. I mean, I would be getting out my torch, my pitchfork, and, and heads would be rolling. If this, this were point. My son, if this were my son, I can tell you I would probably already be in jail. I just probably would be. And because I'd be trying to bail you out. I would have gone and hurt somebody. I really would have. 
um, I probably would have. I still kind of want to go to Maryland and find these people. No, I'm not going to. But holy fuck, man. Oh, it's just infuriating. Um, the whole thing. Well, look at it this way. Uh, this will give David Futrell a couple of more heroes to lie. No, yeah, that's, that's right. Go ahead. Esme just threatened to hurt somebody. Fuck yeah. you. Fuck you. Um, it's, it's, it's sick. It's sick. But, I mean, ugh. although Hannah Rosen's obscene column aside, Hannah Rosen, you are a horrible bully and bigot. Um, it is, it says something that the culture as a whole is at least interested in this story. Um, you know, there's that, saving grace. I don't know if that's... I'm not as hopeful as you are, Dean. I think that the, the culture is interested in this story because of, of the alleged novelty of, of it being two girls. Uh, I think there may be interest because the boy happens to be mentally handicapped, but do I think this culture gives a damn that there are male victims like this of female perpetrators? No, I don't think so for a minute. I think that's why we do what we do. You're probably right. You're probably right. I always want to look like I always. Yeah. So Ever the optimist. I try. I try to see the best in things. I really do. Because if I didn't, I would probably go completely mad, as opposed to partially mad, which I already am. But in any case, we've been at this for about 36 minutes now. You guys are planning a new regular hangout, aren't you? Yes. Would you like to tell us something about it? Yes. Um. <laughs> You're having one. I, no. What would you like to tell us, Dr. T? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, sh I'm internally shifting gears. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I always have the need, after thinking about this story, I just want to go and give myself a full Silkwood um, sort of detox from it. Uh, but um, you know, Paul and I are going to be uh, doing a new hangout called Going Mental, and it will be discussing relationship issues in men. It will be similar, I think, uh, to our Man, Women, Truth, former blog talk radio show. Am I getting that right, Paul? Uh, sounds right to me. Uh, the idea was that we would be speaking uh, in particular about uh, some of the mental health issues that are related uh, to men's coexistence with women, everything from uh, how men operate in relationships with women and vice versa, and uh, some things like uh, high-conflict personalities and uh, people that make their life miserable because you can't possibly love them enough and how to get rid of those fuckers, uh, things like that. Um, and we'll be talking about that uh, once a week starting Wednesday. There will be an announcement coming out on the site tomorrow about that. Uh, and I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, we had a, a nice response to the Man, Woman, Truth radio program on Blog Talk Radio, but that format sucks. Um, and uh, we're really glad to be able to bring this to you live via video to have discussions on this. We also plan on having guests from time to time on the show. And even people like you will be solicited to come on uh, with us and tell your stories, if you're willing. So hopefully we can get some inspiration to men out there that there is another side to life other than trying to make Princess Crazy Pants um, happy with you. Um, and I think also we were talking about, uh, when we were discussing this, I know that I certainly have uh, clients and other folks who follow Shrink for Men who listen to to the old blog talk radio shows uh, archives through their, they download them and um, I'm not quite sure on the technicality of it, but that's, is it 360 li what's Live 365. <laughs> Live 365. So I believe that after we do the hangout, so somebody who knows how to operate a computer, which isn't me, will be able to put it into that format so that people who want to listen to it on their commute or at the gym or wherever um, be our, our director of media operations, James Huff, will be taking oh. each episode and it will be broadcast on our live 365 station along with being right here 
uh, either at YouTube or the website or the Facebook page or any of the other 14 places that you can access this programming if you so desire. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's also going to be some really serious stuff um, uh, because when we look at men in relationships these days, uh, there's plenty to talk about. Um, just to clarify, we used to be on something called Blog Talk Radio. We've moved to Live 365. We have gotten a few complaints because the interface is very different. For the record, all of the archives of all those old shows, including the, uh, I'm sorry, Man, what was it your old show called? Man, Woman, Truth. Man, Woman, Truth. Those are all being converted, cleaned up with better sound, and are going to be made available online. Watch for that in the next few weeks. You may see, even see it on other platforms available uh, through uh, things like iTunes. Uh, more to come on that. Um, and as for regards to this new show of yours, if I know the two of you, correct me if I'm wrong, you will not just be talking about what the problems are, but I imagine you will most you will try be trying very hard to concentrate on what solutions look like, right? Am I right yes. there? Yes. I, would, I'm, I, I for one am tired of talking about the problem behaviors of problem people. Yeah, recognizing that there are problem behaviors and women with problem behaviors is half the battle, but. Once it's established, it's time to start thinking about how do I get out of this. Well, and, and the, the, first show, Dean, the first episode that we're going to do of this focuses on how men undermine themselves in relationships, how they give up too much, how they don't learn to walk away uh, when it's time to walk away, how they don't learn to not get involved when it's time not to get involved to begin with, um, yeah, this is going to focus a lot on solutions. When we have people on it's, uh, who to, to uh, talk about their relationships, it's most likely going to be people who have seen both sides of it, who have been in the high-conflict, nasty, dirty, uh, crazy-ass relationship, but who learned how to get out of it and have something to contribute as they look back to how not to live that way. We're not going to sit here and talk about I mean, God knows, I could have a blast talking about crazy women. Uh, there is a lot of funny stuff to talk about and tragic stuff to talk about with crazy women. But we need to talk about answers because laughing and talking about crazy women uh, on this side, on the other side, there is suicide in men, suffering, uh, financial loss, all sorts of terrible things happening to guys out there. And they need some answers and they also need to know they're responsible for making those answers happen. So that's going to be a lot of the focus of this program. All right, so the name of the program is again? Going Mental. Going Mental with Dr. Carmel Montier and Paul Elam. Uh, and the very first episode is going to be this Wednesday, the 19th? That's correct. At what time? I forgot. Who did I? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me look at my calendar. I think I put I'll, it on there. I'll put it up. Also, let me add to that too, since I know we're wrapping up. Also on Wednesday, uh, I mean, there's there's going to be a lot going on. I will be interviewing Cassie J, uh, the uh, director and producer of the movie The Red Pill, which is about the men's movement. Um, a lot of heated stuff and ideas going on both sides of the fence about that movie. Uh, we'll hopefully answer some of your questions. And then, also on Wednesday, there will be a surprise evening interview, and that's all I'm going to tell you. Uh, so, But it will be announced briefly on the site. Um, uh, we're going to have a lot of stuff going on on Hangouts. Uh, I'll be there for about three hours of it on Wednesday, uh, starting with Dr. T and mine show. I think it's 3 Central is what we agreed on. Yes, and then uh, a few minutes after that, uh, we'll begin the interview with Cassie J. And then after that, big surprise. <laughs> All right, excellent. Okay, I know my segue to your new show was clumsy, but I thought it was important to get it out there. Um, well, we were actually waiting for you to say, do you have anything to add, Dr. T? Well, and, <laughs> and, of course, Dr. T has twice now had something to add, and we thought maybe this would be a great opportune time, but you, you screwed it. Um, well, okay. Regarding anything we've talked about today, whether it's your new show, 
Hannah Rosen, these horrible girls, this poor boy, Paul Elam, did you have anything you'd like to add? Um, no. And Dr. T, is there anything else you'd like to add to this hangout? I think I covered it. Thank you. Awesome. See you guys next, well, see you two on Wednesday, and uh, see everybody else for this hangout next week. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye, everybody.